Hi, everybody. I'm Todd McKim along with the coach, and welcome to this week's show. We'll take a look back at that exciting Stanford game. The Cardinal will come away with a victory at 28 to 21. Preview the next game for the Ducks in two weeks against Pacific. Also be joined in the studio here by Ricky Whittle, one of the outstanding players in the game yesterday, and have uh, plenty of the highlights from the contest as well. Well, Coach, uh, you've been uh, walking the high wire act in the first couple of weeks of the season without a net. Uh, the first three weeks you were able to stay on the wire. This week, unfortunately, it fell off a bit. The Stanford took advantage of a couple of turnovers and a big kickoff return. We dug ourselves too deep a hole, and uh, you know we've been living sort of a storybook life as we talk about. Uh, I had hoped it wouldn't come to an end in a league game. Uh, it did, and maybe in one respect, this is a wake-up call for us. We have to play better football. We can't turn the ball over and rely on uh, on our defense to bail us out. Uh, we made, we did battle at the end. We came back. We made a game of it. We got the onside kick. Uh, but you can't expect to have too many breaks go your way. And, and uh, I think, as I said, we're a good team. We're still a ways away from being a great team. We have to take care of some things in-house. But I think we can do it. And I, I think uh, there's great resolve among our players to get back on the right track. Stanford came in. They were undefeated 2-0-1. Oh, and one, and uh, this is a team that's uh, vastly improved from a year ago. Defensively, I think they impressed uh, people because they, they came after you hard. It was a different-looking Stanford kind of a defense. And offensively, you know, they executed and did what they had to do. They took advantage of a couple of the turnovers. They didn't turn the ball over. And then special teams, they have excelled in that area all year long, and that maybe was the big play all game. They did a nice job. Uh, they did not turn the ball over offensively. We knew coming in that they had a balanced attack. They could run or pass equally well, and this is the first team that really had that kind of balance coming in. Uh, we knew that they were much more aggressive, played with much better intensity on defense than they had in the past. And we knew the special teams were a factor, especially the kickoff return team. And uh, unfortunately, we did not live up to what we needed to do in that area. And Stanford played well. They took advantage of what we gave them. They did not turn the ball over. We couldn't get a turnover, try, try as we could. Uh, and unfortunately, we turned the ball over three times. And, and you can't win football games in the Pac-10 conference and do that. Tony had the three early interceptions uh, after leading the team to a touchdown on the first drive. You made a change at quarterback near the end of the second quarter, the first time you've uh, done that. Uh, Brought in Ryan Perry Smith, and kudos to Ryan Perry Smith. He starts at his own five-yard line and actually gives your team a chance to get some points near the end of the first half. I felt it important that uh, Tony sit down, settle down a little bit. I told him I wasn't benching him, but I wanted to sit him down, have him watch a series, have him relax, get in the flow of the game without having the pressure to perform. And Ryan came in and did move us down. We had a chance, I thought, for a field goal. Unfortunately, a sack didn't give us that opportunity, but we did move. Uh, the ball, I, I think Tony also got a chance to sit back and relax, gather himself, compose himself a little bit. He, he came out much better in the second half. Still wasn't as sharp as I think he can be, uh, but uh, overall a great effort to come back and lead us back towards a win. Yeah, you had a final opportunity to win that game, down by 14 with, uh, I don't know, about five and a half minutes to play. You get the touchdown you need. Unfortunately, you lose Kristen McLemore on the next series as you're trying to, to march on down the field. Uh, McLemore had a sensational game. I mean, 11 catches tied the school record. But in that last series, unfortunately, he wasn't on the field. And I know you would have loved to have him then. Well, he, he, was a, he is a big play guy. He was sort of our go-to guy last night. He seemingly made Stanford one of his best games every year. And this was no exception. Uh, not having him was, was a blow. Uh, although I think, like I said, we've talked about it. We have to be able to step up. I think we have other very capable receivers and other people at the tight end running back position that can do the job. Uh, we had some unfortunate breaks there. We slipped a couple times, dropped one, and, and again, just didn't get it done. But we can't rely on that. We've got to be a better football team than that. All right, we'll get to the highlights momentarily, but let's check the Pac-10 scoreboard and see what else transpired on the first Saturday in fall. You can see Stanford getting its first conference win of the year. The Ducks dropped to one and one in Pac-10 play. Oregon State had a couple of opportunities to beat Arizona State, but they have had a rough time winning in Tempe. The Sun Devils come away with the victory, even there. Uh, overall record at 2-2. Two and two. Flip the page, uh, USC, the conference preseason pick, went into Tucson and took care of business against the Arizona Wildcats. And UCLA stunned by Washington State in the Palouse. Washington State jumped out to a 24-0 lead and held on for their first conference win. They go to Nebraska next week. Flipping the page, a couple of non-conference tilts. Washington had to come from behind in the fourth quarter to upend Army and its wishbone attack. Washington will face Oregon State in Corvallis next week. And California gets its first victory of the year, defeating San Jose State 40-7. All right, let's get into the highlights. First of all, a capacity crowd, 47,237. A great crowd at Autzen Stadium 
for this one. That's the sixth largest crowd in Autzen history. Early on, they made a lot of noise with the wave as the Ducks take the opening kickoff and march 80 yards for the touchdown. Here's an opening pass play to Aaron Jelks. A little play action on the flat. He does a nice job of making a couple people miss. Uh, we, we missed him later on after he hurt his shoulder. Hurt it fairly early and then uh, on a hit downfield. Uh, but Tony drops the ball over the defense. Aaron takes it, comes out. Again, makes a couple people miss here. Nice spin move right here to pick up about another five yards. So the Ducks have it first and 10 on their first possession. Come back, get Dameron Ricketts involved. Wanted to hit him early. We're in a spread receiver set that we have not shown yet. Four wide receivers. He got single coverage. Come back, give the ball to Ricky on an outside power play. Again, his signature trademark, hello to the DBs. I always like to see that. And then a play action pass. Kristen, acrobatic catch. Nice job there, one on one. Uh, and again, he made about three of these. His seat has to be as sore as his back today because I think three of the catches he ended up uh, landing on that part of his anatomy. But great concentration, great catch. Nice throw by Graz, but where he can catch it, nobody else. Gain of 24. That under force play again, this is Aaron Jelks. Uh, not quite as much yard as before. They played this pretty well. He did a nice job, though, of taking about three people with him. A little bit of option here. Get a key first down down there. Tony, uh, Tony Graziani on the speed option. And then I believe this is our first touchdown. This is what we call a swirl route. And again, comes off again. Kristen McLemore, nice throw, nice catch in the end zone. Some question as to whether he was in the one official frustrated me a little bit. Uh, he wasn't sure exactly where uh, Chris landed, whether his feet were in bounds or not, but his seat certainly hits the ground first. Another official came up and helped him out with the call. That one bun in, I guess, is all you need in college football. And so the extra point makes it seven to nothing. Look, made it look easy on that first drive. First drive, we, we've had a lot of success early in the game this year. Uh, we come out and uh, Unfortunately, then we sort of, here's a nice play by Ricky, though, breaking some tackles, trap play at the line of scrimmage. He runs through a couple arm tackles, makes about eight to ten yards. Coming back with a dive, big first down, get the big fella involved, good line surge. Aaron Jelks for about three yards. But unfortunately, a little bit later in the drive, Graziani's pack is picked off by Josh Madsen, the safety. Stanford has great field position. Third down, it was not a real good read by Graz, and they came out of nowhere to get this. We all, we do make a great stand here. A lot of people, Gang Green showing up, Dante Lewis in there early, people stacking up uh, their big running back. This is Camella, who's sort of their power back, and you can see that? that's Asher in on the tackle first rule, and then a host of Gang Green showing up. So it's fourth and short. They decide to go for it at the 28. And Butterfield at six foot four, they only needed a couple of inches and he got the first down. And then comes a big play here as Butterfield goes to the air for the, I think it was the only time during this entire drive. Yeah, we, our, uh, our Sam Backer didn't, we were in a zone, he didn't quite get to the right alignment, they ran some motion. Uh, we almost again come up with a great goal line. So here's an initially a great play, Asher again on the initial hit, hold them up. Uh, we do a nice job here, first three plays in a row, keeping them out. See Jeremy slide down the line, and then Rich Rules got him low. Jeremy's got him high. Dante's in there. Uh, great job. Second down. I tried a big fullback, and he. Then we plug this up. He gets down there close. So then it's third and goal. And again, great line surge here. Great people coming off the edge. And again, we keep him out, and that's a great job. Great job by the interior defense of our line. Troy Bailey coming around the outside. Now, we talked about what they're going to do fourth down. We said they're going to go outside. We had a pretty decent call. We get just, the guy just gets in by about half a yard. Rich is there. Um, you know, it's, it's, again, very close to being a great goal line stand. Unfortunately, couldn't keep him out. Stanford has come into this game running the ball effectively against most teams, but I thought more often than not, your defense did a pretty good job against the run. They did. And again, uh, the turnovers, again, put our defense in the hole. Here's another one. Tony has to throw off balance, get a little pressure, and uh, puts us, again, the defense back on the field. You want to pick the highlights up in the second quarter. Stanford, after the interception, has great field position and kind of a bad luck on a couple of fronts uh, right here. Not only does uh, Stanford get a big game, but your starting safety, Jaya Figueres, comes up with a broken leg. Yeah, unfortunately, Jaya got that cut underneath him. Our own man sort of hit him and, and contributed to it. Uh, he'll be out about six weeks. It may be a season ending. We 
Got to hope to get in the bowl game now and let him get back with us. Uh, we get beat on contain there, uh, do a pretty nice job, but Bookman has great speed, bounces it to the outside, and gets in the end zone. So the point after is good, and Stanford leads for the first time. And then they called roughing the kicker there. Yeah, I, I talked with the officials about that. Anytime the, fit, the kicker's leg is in the air, they're very, very touchy about any kind of contact at all. I thought it was incidental, and uh, they explained that, again, that anytime it's touched with his foot in the air. That play right there, unfortunately, uh, our own back knocks our, our blocker off, and the guy gets a chance to uh, take a shot at Tony from the backside. Play action pass here. They almost caught us napping, but Alex recovers and had a chance in interception. Couldn't quite make that play, but he was great to recover to stop uh, an easy touchdown. Second and three play coming up here. We we'll do a nice job of coming under right here. Uh, Derek Barnes and uh, BJ in on the tackle coming through. They run the same play, same type of sweep play we do, and uh, we do a nice job here of coming under the play. Those two make them things see from the ground level here, wrapping up. We've got to stop those backs before they get started. So a good call here, a little shovel pass. A little shovel pass. We were actually in a, in a man defense, should have been in a little bit better shape. Uh, the tight end sort of blocked the guy who was assigned to that back, and it was a nice call at the time. We get a nice pressure, though, here. Barnes and Schmidt coming in. Uh, sack the quarterback. Again, pretty good coverage again because he got nobody to throw to. Got a lot of time back there in the pocket. Derek keeps fighting. That's a great job. And Smitty gets him high and Derek has him low. Reggie finishes him off. So this is a big uh, series because Stanford had been in good field position with an opportunity to extend the lead. Almost a pick, almost a catch, yeah. almost a pick. And we needed that football. <laughs> I, you know, that, that seems like a thousand years when that ball's being tipped up in the air that that play lasts. <laughs> And here's uh, Tony back to throw, and this one overthrown. Overthrown. Tony gets hit very, very hard here. You don't see it on the film right as he released the ball right under the chin. Uh, 33 came in on a late blitz. Ball was overthrown a little bit. And again, unfortunate turnover. Puts our defense in a hole. Uh, but I think they responded this time. They did indeed. In fact, Stanford ended up going backwards on this play. Nice job again there. Great play by Troy Bailey. Block. Just keeps working hard there. Troy was beat up early, set out a couple days of practice this week, and came back, and I think it helped him. So now you made a change in quarterback, and you're starting at the own, at your own five-yard line. Own five. Ricky gets his five on the first one, uh, runs through a tackle, as I said, just keeps dragging people, uh, gets us a first down, gets out of bounds. We're trying to get into our, our two-minute clutch mode. I want to try and get a score, at least get a position to put one on the board or before halftime. That same option play we'd run earlier. Ryan Perry Smith taking it, pitching it to Rick. Nice job. Again, delivering a blow, taking the guy with him. And then a big play here. First and ten. Throwback screen. Throwback screen, one we put in uh, just for them. I, I, I thought Rick might have just used his speed a little bit better, but it's a big play. Gets us out of the hole. And obviously one that... Uh, we can come back to later on. Get the play action. We've thrown a lot of this, and some of the big plays last game resulted on this action. And we saw that they had not covered the backside very well. 33 makes a nice play to force Ricky to cut back, and then the pursuit finally gets him. So we're near the end of the second quarter. Stanford leading 14-7, but Oregon driving. T counter boot. And now this is the play that Jelks gets hurt on. Not quite on stride and, and really takes too much of the blunt of that bro on, blow on his shoulder and uh, sort of partially separated. They say it may be two to three weeks. Uh, we'll, we'll wait and see. Nice throw here to Kristen McLemore on a quick series play. Get us some yards. He splits the defenders. Uh, good quick release by Ryan. Puts the ball right on the money. And, uh, and then Chris splits the defenders. Gets another first down for us there. And then an interesting play here. This is a first down play. He's hit. They, they didn't know what to rule, really. They called an inadvertent whistle, uh, which I thought it was a forward pass. I thought his arm was in motion, but it cost us time off the clock. Unfortunately, we come right back, though, with a screen again. Uh, get about 10 yards. May have been a first down. Now, no, it was not, because this is a fourth down play. It's our cardinal formation. We do a nice job here of uh, running Chris out in the flat and catches it too bad. We couldn't have got the ball a little sooner. You had a little bit more run after catch. But again, stops the clock, big first down. 34 seconds remaining, second and at 10. 
We have a couple shots here, and, and uh, again, Pat wasn't quite ready coming out of his break to look for the ball. Pretty nice throw by Ryan. Uh, obviously, wish we had that one back. And then this is a key play, not only because of the sack, but because Ryan stays in bounds. And I don't right. know if everybody realized that because the clock continued to run. Yes. And that, unfortunately, cost Oregon an opportunity. We are ready for the third quarter. Stanford leading at the intermission 14 to 7. So we go into the third quarter highlights. Uh, as we pick things up, Stanford has the football as they get the opening possession of the third quarter. They try that run on the big sweep, and nothing doing here. Dante Lewis, who played another good game at the safety spots. Nice to have Dante back. He and Kenny combine on this, do a great job coming inside and outside, <coughs> and really slicing in. This is a stretched out play. We sort of string it out. Dante comes in underneath again, and Kenny's there too. Great job, and nice to have him back, certainly with Jaya being hurt now too. So Butterfield, great nice, play. Yes, nice defense by Alex. He's right there. This is a perfect pass, but he's there just to flex it, knocks it away. Does a really nice job. And, and Alex, you know, we, we ask Alex basically to cover one-on-one -on -one the majority of the time. He gets no help, and he's done a great job all season long. <laughs> So on third and eight, they just have to dump it. Good pressure. Great pressure. Again, I think that was uh, Dante coming off the edge. A little blitz. We come back and throw us. This is not a double pass look here. This was just a quick screen, but the throw was actually looked like a lateral to me. But Chris did a great job with it. Come back, run the option. Tony again steps it up. I believe now we get to a short yardage situation. Right. You pick that up, so we'll, we'll go to the first and ten. And again, we're coming back. Chris, again, he got pretty good respect from their corners, so we could uh, throw him the ball out there in the flat. And again, we're in our four wide receiver set here, and we're getting single coverage. Nice throw and catch, and good again. Plus yardage after the catch, which is very, very important. Got to put that ball away, though. And a stretch to get that first down. So the next one is second and 10. Got a screen play. Dameron Ricketts just eludes the block there. Uh, Blake Spence comes out, I think, and gets it. We get about 10 yards again. This is a, a double screen. Uh, we have one going one way, one the other, quarterback's choice. And again, you can just see this. Uh, Tossie coming out there, laying a block, ground angle. You get Crispin blocking up the field, not back towards the ball carrier. Now, here's that same look. This is a lateral, and he yes, wants and to this, throw. Yes, and this was a double pass opportunity for Chris. They covered it, which allowed him to take off running. Does a nice job. That's great judgment on his part. Uh, He's done this before. I have a lot of confidence that he'll handle these situations. We have two receivers going down the field. They're uh, covered again, and that allows him to pump it once or just take a look. And, and uh, he was a quarterback in high school. He's got that instinct. You make a good point because a lot of people would just go ahead and throw it anyway, no matter whether they're open or closed down or uh, covered. Nice uh, judgment by Tony there, getting win late uh, right at the sideline. Third and eight, and batted down at the line of scrimmage. In fact, Tony threw it so hard, he caught it. Blocked back then, he caught the ball, actually made three to four yards. Uh, had an opportunity here for a field goal, just missed it. Wasn't as good a kick as I think we're capable of, but uh, unfortunately did not get it there. So here comes Stanford, they get it back, but the defense holds. The defense does a nice job here. Reggie folding back inside, stopping a little trap play inside. Uh, we're coming again. Reggie again right there, Asher Rule, you know, which are all who are always in the pile somewhere, high or low. Good job by BJ inside to hold that seam. Reggie's there. Again, we talk about gang green, and that's a good example. So Stanford forced to punt. So you've kind of you've gotten back uh, to where this game is a little bit more under control. You yeah. feel with one score, you've tied it. Got a little momentum, I think. Uh, we've held them. Uh, we're starting to settle in on offense a little bit. Uh, Tony's making some plays. This is a great catch by Damian Griffin. This was a, a key third down conversion here at uncovered receiver. Tony puts the ball a little farther than he wants, and Damon, that's just a super catch. He is an excellent receiver. I think we'll get more playing time down the road. Unfortunately, I uh, couldn't continue the drive, and so Bidwell comes in and a rocket job here, and it looked like pretty good coverage, but what a roll. And, and unfortunately, yeah, too good. We, we need to be aware of that. Again, it's awareness on special teams. We could have stopped that ball inside the five, which had been great. Uh, we defend the shovel pass this time very well. Barnes, Bailey are all in there. Uh, obviously, that's, that's good coaching that we can come back and stop that play this time. Got, there's Rule right there taking the throwing lane away, force the sack. So now, 
a very key, what about three minutes or maybe even two minutes of this game. Ricky kind of mushing, yeah. picking his way here. Nice That's about seven. Yeah. Nice job of reading his blocks. That, that's again, I think where Ricky's improved a great deal this year. As he reads those blocks, uses his blockers now. We come with the play action off of that same look. This is a howitzer down there, and Chris gets behind him. And I'm not sure if he was in the end zone or they call him down. Obviously, the one uh, doesn't make too much difference because we score next play. But here's again the same idea, off the same look. We just run the ball. Good play fake by Tony covering over the football. And then putting it down, I don't know how far this is in the air, but it's about 65 yards or more. And he's capable of that. And this is a great catch because it takes a lot of concentration to stay with the ball that long in the air. And great catch uh, by Chris again. We go over the top with Ricky on the very next play, and he's in the end zone. And we've got a little bit of momentum now, obviously feeling better about what's going on. The game is going to be tied here very soon for the first time uh, since the first quarter. Kick after is good. And now the place is rocking. I mean, and you hope to, you know, have a, a defensive stand and get it back and maybe can take the lead. But here's the big play of the game. Big play going the wrong way. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, didn't get this kick where we wanted. Still is no excuse for poor coverage like this and some missed tackles, although that was the kicker. And uh, he's off to the races. And it's very unfortunate. Uh, we probably should have. Uh, Pooched it or squibbed it as we had earlier. We felt this last kick of the half with the wind, or of the quarter with the wind, and uh, we took that chance and then backfired. So a real turnaround there on the kickoff return, but we've still got a quarter to play. We've got a couple of plays before this quarter ends. And you move the ball on these last two plays, get, you know, come right back. Yeah, we get again, uh, Kristen McLemore going up. Great catch. We got one on one coverage. and. Again, Tony's going to look his way in that situation. Good play fake inside, holds the linebackers. We're not, our protection breaks down a little bit, but Tony puts it up there. Chris beat his man, gets the feet down inbounds. So we can get back some field position, get back some momentum. Ricky runs right by a, a dogging guy inside, gets 12 yards on a carry outside. And uh, we're running sort of a zone play, and we're letting 13 come inside. Uh, he took a better angle than we thought, but again, nice job by Ricky reading that, getting past him. Oh, here we go, fourth quarter. Exciting again, right down to the very end. As we pick up the action, Stanford has the ball, but they're unable to move on their first possession of the fourth quarter. Good play there by Dante Lewis. Dante again coming up on the sweep play, forcing it from the outside, taking on the blocker and still getting an arm on, the, on Bookman, sort of making him slip and trip, and then uh, Jeremy's right there to make sure he's down on the ground. So, with 12 and a half to play, down by seven. Raziani comes back, a play that uh, the Good Ducks play used a lot. Yeah, we, this is a play we actually have, have three receivers. We've hit the deep pass, we've hit the crossing route, now we hit the tight end in the flat real quick. Nice, easy throw and catch, and again, Blake gets some good yardage and gets out of bounds. First catch by a tight end on the day. No, this is not a replay of the replay. This is an, another play. Yeah, this is a different, little different look. Uh, same type of idea, though, just a delayed pass off of play action. Uh, notice that Blake does a nice job of selling the play. Good fake. Draws has to pump just a little bit. And again, same result. Good play. Positive yardage. Gets the first down, get out of bounds. We're in, we're in a no huddle or a, a clutch situation now, too. Good job there. Uh, Ricky got banged up a little bit, uh, and uh, Kevin Parker came in, made a key run right there. The gain of eight, but on third and three, the, the option this time is defensed by Stanford. Yeah, they do a nice job. We probably went to the well one too many times. And then I felt it was better at that point to kick the ball away. Uh, great play here by Mark Butterfield, their quarterback, under a great deal of pressure, held the ball, took a slide step, made a big, big completion. You know, they didn't ask Butterfield to do a lot, but on this series, they did, and he was he was razor sharp. He couldn't do a whole lot against what he did in this series. No, he responded very well. He got hit very hard here, throws this one up. It's, it's very well defensed. It's a great catch. I haven't seen it yet from all angles, but uh, Manning made a great catch if he caught the ball. To come back again with, with probably just as good a pass, put it perfectly, and great catch, and again, great coverage. Uh, as I've said before, we put Alex in a lot of tough situations. He responded, that ball had to be perfectly placed. Sometimes you just have to tip your hat to the other guy for making a play. Yes. 
So here you come. You need two scores, and you come right back in the hurry-up offense. Yeah, we get a quick one there to Josh. Uh, choice route for the first down. Run Ricky out of bounds again. I think was, this is third and three, and we get it get out of bounds. And we're we've got three timeouts, and it's five minutes or so, and we're in the clutch situation. And uh, Tony does a nice job here again, shuffling up, running outside, getting the first down, uh, getting out of bounds. Again, clutch run there. He was uh, he was beat up, but uh, he continued to battle. Again, hit Kristen here, get out of bounds. We do a nice job. In fact, that we did not use a timeout, I believe, in that first series, which no. is a credit to our players and their clock management and everything else. Little screen. Again, this is where Chris, I think, gets hurt at the end. Uh, got a helmet or actually sort of got one of our own players, I think, trying to block. Uh, got a knee to the back. That was where he was hurt this summer, and uh, it's still very, very tender. He's okay, though. X-rays were negative, and uh, he should be okay. This was his 11th reception on the day, tying a school record. Again, I'm not sure if he got it right there or previously. Uh, he'd taken a couple shots to that back anyway on his falls uh, on some of his acrobatic catches. Here we hit Rick. Again, he uses his blockers very, very well. He doesn't get out of bounds. We, we almost get the first down. Uh, and again, we're trying to break something here. When you need two scores, you have to take an advantage of any time you can, maybe think you can break one. Uh, rather than always getting out of bounds. But we did a good job, as I said before, with clock management. Good job of using his blockers. Bob Baldwin there ahead of him. Paul Wiggins ahead of him. And uh, just a few too many people there from Stanford coming. And the throwback to Ricky. Throwback screen again. This is a great effort. Uses his blockers. Gets the ball. Gets the first down and gets out of bounds. And again, carrying a Stanford player with him. That's an excellent effort. This is your, uh, your shift. Yeah, we call that the cardinal formation. And uh, it worked every time. It works again here. Uh, we get the nice job. Sort of a circus catch there by Dameron Ricketts. I wish you'd have caught that the first time. It sort of, my heart jumped three or four times there. But again, key touchdown and uh, great catch. Clutch effort. We get the score that we need. So with the point after, you go for one here to close to within seven. Smith delivers. And now you elect to go for the onside kick. Under three minutes to play, you have all three timeouts remaining. We debated what to do, but we decided to try the onside kick, and we get exactly what we need. Uh, great play in there. Steepens in there. And what happens, you can't tell, but there's Josh, 88, coming out of the ball, out of the pile of the backside. And he's running around the circle with the football, trying to show it to the officials. And all I want to make sure is, I said, hey, show him. Don't let the Stanford guy take it. He's walking around. I think they must have thought he brought that off the sideline or something. <laughs> well, that is our play of the day. Running a little short of time, but he needs to talk about BYE anyway. The Ducks have a bye this week, then they take on the Pacific Tigers. We'll be back in two weeks with all the highlights from that game. So for the coach, I'm Todd McKim. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a good week and a half off. We'll see you.